Yes, yes, this is Mr. Controversy, and this is the infamous three-point conversion station. Keep it locked. Yes, yes, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. It's your man, Mr. Controversy. Did you miss me? Another Saturday morning where we come in, get to talk about the NBA Finals, NFL football, just the NBA period, free agency. Major League Baseball, and all the dumb decisions that these sports athletes have made this week. And of course, I'm not doing this by myself. First, I got my man on the ones and twos, Engineer G. What up, G? Yo. And I got my road dog, my partner in crime, D Intellectual. What up, D? What up, though? What up, though? How you feeling, man? I'm good, man. How you feeling today? Hey man, I mean, I'm all right, man. It's just just all right. Yeah, just it's been a rough week for me, but I'm good. First, I want to start by saying, um, probably not listening, but because uh, she's doing some work. But happy <laughs> anniversary to my beautiful wife. <laughs> it is seven years. Wow, been married for seven years, bro. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. A long time. It's beautiful. I ain't think. I when I was young, I thought I wouldn't. I was like, I don't see how people can wake up every morning with the same woman <laughs> for five years. That's that's what I was thinking when I was young. <laughs> hey, but it's beautiful, baby. It's beautiful. I wouldn't trade being married for the world, bro. I'm trying to have them problems. Oh, nah, ain't, oh, I'm Aww. serious. Y'all, y'all got to worry about if she start tripping. She tripping for no reason. You ain't no ring. He's tripping and all of that, and you ain't got to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good, you know, because I see a lot of people that do deal with it. But anyway, we're talking sports, so uh, <laughs> we have a great show today. We are once again we're talking about the NBA Finals that happened last night, uh, Game Four. Real quick, were you shocked? No. You weren't shocked? No, I was with Paul Pierce when he was first talking about it. Like, man, this is the last time we're going to be in Oracle Arena. Right. You can it, feel the energy, man. Yeah, just. We'll, we'll get into it. We'll yeah, into yeah, it. yeah. I, um, we'll get into that. Also, we got to talk about this free agency. Brooklyn and the Atlanta Hawks, our beloved Atlanta Hawks, made a trade. And we'll get into that. Well, the Atlanta Hawks traded the traded Torian Prince and – 2020 second round pick to the Brooklyn Nets for Allen Crabb, a 17th, um, 17th overall pick, and a protected first round pick in 2020. In 2020. The, the Hawks traded their 2021 second round. 2021. Pick. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, 2021. But either or, so now this opens up for the Brooklyn Nets. Maybe they can get a max two max deals or what. So we're going to get into that. Also, NFL money's been given like it's candy, and we're going to talk. Must be candy. Yeah, must be candy. If but you play quarterback. If that's you play right, quarterback, right. that's you the play, number one you, thing. If you play anything else, you, hey, you better take this little 250000 Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> sit down somewhere. And also, Atlanta Braves made a uh, splash by taking Dallas Kuchel. Am I saying it correctly? <laughs> Keiko. 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 Okay. Keiko. Keiko. Yeah. Why isn't that spelled Kuchel? Come on, man. You know how people spell stuff now. You know, baseball, we have them crazy names. And space. But either or, he he's, he wasn't relevant last year. He didn't pitch that well last year, so that's probably why I'm not saying his name correctly. We didn't say his name that much last year. <laughs> but anyway, Braves got a former Cy Young pitcher. But the Atlanta Cubs, they won out, you and say, they got – You say that, Atlanta I mean, Cubs. Chicago Cubs. They got, <laughs> they got uh, Kimbrell. Which is huge. Which is huge. We'll get into it. We'll talk about that. And then we got 
Mr. Damian Adams, Battlegrounds champ, coming on the show. Indeed. Talking boxing. Um, we saw what happened to, to Anthony <laughs> Joshua. So, uh, uh, but, um, so we're talking about the state of boxing. Shook up the world. Shook up the world. And then we got Stop It, Quick Hits, What's On Our Minds. So make sure you stay tuned. You can let your family and friends know they can check us out. Locally in Atlanta, 1100 AM, WWE. The Real. Also, we're live on the Three Point Conversion Facebook page. Sup, sup, sup. We're live. Um, video and all. Also, they can go to iHeartRadio, Radio Now, TuneIn Radio. We're on as well. So, And you call in at 404-603-8770. And it is now time to get into these quick hits. Let's get it. Shout out to Sharon Beats for the sick beats. Sharon Beats. So, first off, we got to start off with, um, all right, Jets, they um, finally got this guy, um, I think they signed an offensive lineman. (laughs) Um, We weren't expecting this. G, can you? I'm having a system problem. Can you give me the name of the offensive lineman that the Jets signed as a GM? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to pull up as well, but if, if you look at our um, three point conversion Facebook page, there uh, is a picture of this alleged offensive lineman. <laughs> uh, his name is Joe Douglas. Um, he definitely looked like he's straight off the old line. Yeah, Man, that's a big uh, he dude. had a position with it with the Jets, uh, right? Was he like a so he a personnel? Was, or something, some, something something he like had that. he had a position with the Jets, so it's kind of a promotion, I guess you'd say. Right. Um, we don't know who he is. No, so I thought he was with it, uh, what's the name? Right, but I'm, we don't know who he is. So as my whole point is, is this a puppet for Adam Gase? Is Adam Gase still? running his team and doing whatever he wants to do. Yeah, he was with the Eagles previously. Yeah, he was a uh, uh, Eagles vice president of player personnel. Okay. That's a, that's a, so, that's a, I would think he wouldn't be Adam Gase's. I mean, coming in as a director of player personnel, that's next step is what, GM, right? I, 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 I'll take your word for it. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> uh, some of those terms like sound like, okay, they all kind of do the same, same job. Thing, but right. <laughs> yeah, it's just a term. That's why I say he's, to get at this point, unless, I mean, what I wonder if, I guess because he's with Philadelphia, they've made some moves and right, maybe, right, but right. I just still think Adam Gates is running his team. So either or, moving well, if, on. If he is, they're gonna, they in trouble. Right. No. <laughs> so... The Zone is pushing for a rematch. You know, the company The Zone is pushing for a rematch of Andy Ruiz Jr. and Anthony Joshua to take place in New York. Just like the first fight, Joshua's promoter Eddie Hearn previously said that the rematch would take place in Joshua's native UK. But I don't of, think that's going to Of course that's what he's going to yeah, want. It's right. like the first time he leaves the, U, the, the, the UK, he gets knocked out. I saw him on another station. Um, he was doing an interview, and he was like, you know, he wants to start coming out of the U.K. to start winning. But the first time he comes out the U.K., he loses, and now he doesn't want to fight outside of the U.K. no more. Nah, You're not bro. the champ no more. You can't dictate this. You can't dictate that. Like You got to go with what it is. You know what I mean? Right. No, I definitely agree. I agree, and like you stated, you can't talk all of this mess yeah. and then come to the United States and lose. Now you expect everyone else to always go to the UK. Nah, no, it's not happening. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Moving on. District Attorney Steve Howe, the DA in charge of the Tyreek Hill case, told the Kansas City Star on Friday that the investigation into Hills isn't currently active and that it won't be reopened unless some new evidence comes to light. This may give the NFL the opportunity to do their own investigation. Which, this is a time where you like, okay, now the NFL can come in 
if they want. Because it's over. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's going on. But I don't like when they make a. It wouldn't have matter what the police they, did. Yeah, they were coming in. But at least they let <laughs> them handle it. That's what I'm saying. And you still go get six games. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my thing. Let, let's say the fact that they let them handle it on their own and wait. Because usually, usually you have the NFL, they, they jump cake, they jump started. Six games. You think six games? <laughs> man, they don't play, man. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if it's going to be six, man. Of it's course probably, they, it'll probably course, be six. Yeah, because, I mean, they just off the record, they, they, they would give him six games. Yeah. Just, even though it, it, it was nothing, and you know what I mean? Nothing concrete. Just off, just that, just off of that, they'll yeah, give him so. six games. All right, moving on. Kenya Martin Jr., the son of the former NBA forward, Kenya Martin, has decided to forego college to pursue a professional career overseas. Martin had previously committed to play at Vanderbilt under first-year head coach Jerry Stackhouse. Agree? You 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 like it? I mean, I'm not against it one way or the other. I think it's it's, it's good that he has a father that played in the NBA, so he's probably going to be over there with him, making sure he's good. So I think it could be a good look on that end. Um, you know, I guess I would. It, it just depends on you know his reasoning for doing it. If he's doing it to to go against the system, no problem. If he's doing it because he didn't want to go to school, you know, what I mean, it, it's it's just a lot of things with it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, he he gets money, like you said. I guess the good part is his father played in the NBA, so mm. he he's probably been around professional right. professionals or NBA, you know, basketball professional basketball players. Kind of know the game. He's gonna be overseas, but. And like you say, he got money. If he, he probably can have an interpreter if he needs right. an interpreter around him all the time. Right. He can have this. He can have that. It's not going to be, you know, a per se, you know, Brandon Jennings situation where Brandon Jennings went over there and it wasn't as great of an experience because he couldn't talk right. to him. He couldn't do this. He couldn't right. do that. You know? and, and I'm not even saying he has – I'm saying he's going to get money. He gets paid. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Can't go to college and get paid. Yeah, definitely. So, moving on, the Houston Texans' first GM, Brian Gain, after – I'm sorry, fired – Brian Gain after one season into a five year contract. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't, I, I wouldn't like it. Had to be something behind the scenes. They went, what, 11 and 5 last year? Yeah. What was, what was their record last year? 11 no, and 5? Were they 11 and 5? Yeah, something like they won the division. Yeah. yeah. As won the well, division, so went to the playoffs. It's um, interesting. It had to be something with, when you fire a GM after the draft and free agency and you're already in camp. Right. Like something had to happen, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, they didn't really go after big free agents, really. Anyway, I mean, what did they really maybe need a running back? If and, and line could definitely need the line, like completely put together. So is this the new thing now that GMs get fired after the draft yeah. and after they? I don't know what the thing is. People get fired. Yeah. So so the, the uh, someone above them can take the credit if there is success. Right. right. But then if it's not, well, that's we, why we fired him. He didn't do a good well, job. Well, we didn't have a GM, so we couldn't. Or the GM that we had, he was just horrible. Right. So that's that's why we fired him. Wow. Moving on. Texas A and M DB Derek Tucker has been charged with assault stemming from a March twenty fourth fight. <laughs> With another man over some tacos. Uh, Tucker initially left the other individual with bruises and scrapes on his legs and hands before allegedly returning to the scene to hit the man on the back of his head. Tucker was released on a $5,000 bond. The returning to the scene. You know what I mean? Like, you know, things happen, right? You can get into an so, argument, a little scuff up, you know. But what, what was, I mean... Well, Return I wonder what to the same. Okay, but what, let's so so let's, let's get into no, this. When, so, when, so when you say taco, you think oh he got a taco and he took mine. I'm sure it wasn't like was over was it a taco? Maybe it was because the taco wasn't good and dude said something about it. He says about a taco. I, I think it was it was part of an argument like okay which Taco Bell taco is dude, the best? Dude, if they got into it over that, yo, dude, needs they to got be it. Good. They're like crunchy tacos, no soft tacos. Gorditas, and, and, yeah. <laughs> Look, and y'all, you know, it's like, Joe, yo, yo, your wife probably can't even make taco, you know, and then they go from But you got to think they're in Texas, too, so I don't know if it was about Taco Bell. Did he know right? the guy? So it doesn't say if he... doesn't say. I know there's there's really he, not a lot of other information about it, whether was, they knew each other They knew or each not. other. Or, or, or... Because I guarantee you, somebody's, exact somebody's mama tacos. got thrown into it, and then after that, it If got we knew it. each other, we really about to get into it because you called the police on me. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, former Oklahoma State and South Carolina basketball coach Lamont Evans has been sentenced to three months in prison for accepting bribes to link top players with bribe playing paying managers and financial advisors. Um, let me. This is the craziest thing. Uh, he came out and said he talked to the judge and he said, I guess he confessed. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I just, I mean, I just thought it was gonna be an easier way to make money. And the judge said he bought in anybody else to come in front of him about that. About that. Say he go <laughs> give him the business. <laughs> like he flat out said that, like on the bench. So I I know people have gotten away with it in the past, but why do they continuously do this? Because, like, lately, it's been – people have been getting caught for it. Yeah, you're getting caught, like, and getting in trouble, trouble. And yeah. I, I, the big – one of my biggest things is, like, if you're going to do it right, like, learn from the mistakes. Like, you're still talking on the phone. You're still doing this and do all they, that. Do they have to pay the money back? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. You got to forfeit 22000 Right. That's how much he – that's how much he took. So, okay, you got to give that you gotta back. got to give it back. Because, yeah. look, the thing is, in 100 hours of community service – Get that road up quick. I'm wondering if they're saying like, "Yo, three months might be worth." Because you only got three months. It ain't worth twenty two. It, it, no, it's not worth twenty two thousand. But I'm saying he got the money. He probably got to give it back. He got to give it back. Only and he do, ain't spend it. And do no. Nah, he probably spent. He probably gonna have to pay that over a period of time. And he got to do them three months, which probably gonna be in some minimum facility. facility you know, correct the facility. Um, yeah. Another quick, um, quick hit. Djokovic, Djokovic lost. In the semifinal, he just lost for the second straight um, oh, for, in the French uh, Open. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He mm. got upset. So, wow. All right, there you have it. Those are our quick hits. We will be right back. We're about to get into this NBA Finals. You might yeah. not want to hear. Yeah. Or you might hear something you might not want to hear. Yeah. You might hear something you might not believe. We'll be right back. Good morning, this is Greg Hurd with your news break. The Atlanta Braves ran up the score on the Miami Marlins, winning 7-1. Ronald Acuna Jr. and Freddie Freeman each homered, and Mike Soroka pitched eight innings, giving up only one run with six strikeouts. The Atlanta Falcons start minicamp on this Tuesday. Coach Dan Quinn says he expects Julio Jones and Vic Beasley to attend, but not Grady Jarrett. The Atlanta Hawks traded Torian Prince and a 2020 second-round pick to the Brooklyn Nets for Alan Crabb, a 17, the 17th overall pick, and a protected first-round pick. The Atlanta Dream are looking to bounce back this Sunday against the Connecticut Sun. To make sure to follow the three-point conversion for all of your major sports news and updates, it's where fans' opinions matter. Hey folks, Hanson Josh is here to reveal some big news to all the AM1100 listeners. I have an app. That's right, you can now check out all your favorite programs right here on The Real with The Real 1100 app. Whether it's sports, entertainment, or lifestyle, The Real 1100 definitely has you covered. So why don't you just tell me how much it's going to cost me? And here's the best part. It's available in your Google Play or Apple App Store, and it's free to download. Actually, you can count me in on this one. So download The Real 1100 app today and stay in tune with The Real. What's up, man? It's Metal World Peace. Shout out to the Three Point Conversion Radio. Yes, yes, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. It's your man, Mr. Controversy, with The Intellectual. Yes, yes. And this next segment, The Hot Topic, is brought to you by Cindy Cuts Barbershop, located on 3000 Chapel Hill Road, Suite 206, Douglasville, Georgia. Make sure you go check them out. Great barbers. Great men. 
it will be lines because everyone can cut. So just know that everyone can cut. You want to be there because everyone can cut, but you'll have a good time talking sports, community, unity, just having a good time. Also, shout out to Dwayne Chambers. He is the barber. Once you come in, all the way down on the left, the last barber on the left, all the way down. And you can follow him on Instagram at Simha the Barber. That's S I M H A T H E B A R B E R. And shout out to my man, Frank, who's always supporting the show and listening to the show. We appreciate you, Frank. All right, so it is time for the NBA Finals Talk, the hot topic. Last night, we saw, to some, to most of us, honestly, a shocking, I thought it was shocking. I I don't know about you, uh, D. I know you said you weren't shocked, but let's be real. Nobody anticipated them to beat Golden State like that. And Toronto won 105-92, and that score don't even do the justice. You got to remember, in the first quarter, Toronto had got down as much as 13. And even in the second, Toronto pushed the lead back up. But, I mean, Golden State pushed the lead back up, but Toronto came and did what they were supposed to do. My question to you, man, uh, like, I know the injuries with Golden State. But now at this point, Clay was back. He looked healthy. We know Boogie's struggling, but I hey, I give Bo- Boogie so much respect for battling, knowing he's not a hundred percent for the team. <clears throat> Absolutely. But still, now are you still saying because of injuries? Looney played. It's, it's it, so so for me. It's, it's so it's 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 injuries, but it goes deeper, right? Like they look tired now. Like Steph is using a lot of energy. Everybody's using a lot of energy on the um, the offensive end to try to get open because Toronto is playing real good defense. Uh, Vanderfleet is playing real good defense on Steph Curry. Of course, Steph Curry still got off the last game, but this game he didn't shoot too well. And when they're doing that on the offensive end, I mean, I'm sorry, with them on the defensive end, you can see where it's it's playing off. Like, the, the, they, they aren't able to go as deep because no one else is showing up. So, Steph has to play more minutes. Clay's having to play more minutes. Iggy's having to play more minutes. And now that they're just, they just don't have the energy. We're, we're in, what, year five? This is, the, what, the fifth run, sixth run? Fifth. And and you're talking about playing deep in the June every year. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's a lot. And you can see it it, it eventually is, is taking a toll on them. And – you know, uh, again, I said I wasn't surprised because um, in the first quarter and second quarter, you can see that Golden, like Toronto, couldn't hit anything. Mm-hmm. Like they were, they were out. Like Kawhi was the only one scoring, right? But you could still see that it just wasn't Golden State's game, right? Like they just weren't taking it. It just wasn't there. And that that third quarter came. Kawhi came in, and hit them two big threes, and that was it. All right, G. You watch the game when when you look at. Golden State now, where do you, I mean, are you concerned? Do you say if they if they do lose, are you concerned about the team? If Because this is probably, if KD leaves, this is what you're seeing. Well, I mean, I think they can make some other moves in free agency. Um, they'll have to look at getting other kinds of players that can, if they have to deal with uh, Houston again, or a Clippers or Portland, um, a lot of teams. What the advantage that that Golden State had is that you had two guys who could get their own shot, and they're two of the best guys who can get their own shot in Steph and Kevin Durant. And now with this series with a guy who can get his own shot not being there, the defense can load up on the other guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if there are players, and then they don't have the shooters that they, the, sh- the shooting that they used to have. Uh, one thing that made them great is not that they were, they, a lot of teams, a lot of people think, well, they took a lot of threes. No, they just made a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
and they were shooting at an historic pace. And if they're not making them, then they they kind of struggle on offense. And then also with their with their front court, it's just not. It's not doing it. it it's not yeah. working because they're they're just not athletic enough, or they're they're too slow, or they're not big enough. Um, like I thought, Mark Gasol would be schemed out of the series, mm-hmm. but he's he's playing his normal minutes, and he's looking as quick as ever out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought like Kevon Looney would, uh, his his quickness would would kind of take Gasol out, um, and then there's also and then Abaka has returned to what he was in Oklahoma Man. City. I said he's just a weak side shot blocker, but he made some weak side blocks right. at at pivotal times. Right. So um, yeah. I think that the the roster construction of the Warriors uh, is going to change because it's going to be around Steph and Clay, but you have to. It has to be guys, other guys who can get their own shot and some athletic bigs to make them a little quicker in the front court. Without KD, they're a championship contender. With KD, they're almost unbeatable. Uh, well, yeah. that's true. And I'll say this. I think that Kerr should, and it, it might be too late, I don't know, but because I still don't think it's over, over. I mean, just because... Go to stay has shooters, and you just now if they get catch fire and get hot, it's gonna it's hard to beat them. But I feel like this game is gonna be like game one. That energy that like that's why I'm thinking that it may be over because that energy that was in game one, that's what's gonna be here in, in game five going back to Jurassic Park after this. But th- those but this is what I think Kerr should have done. He should have inserted um, Bogut. Because every time Bogut was in the game, they made a run. They played well. And I think with Boogie, I know he had Looney, and I know you played, you played Bogut most of the time because Looney wasn't there. But I think with Boogie, he's not 100%. You see him, he's not ready. But I still say that with Bogut, Bogut to me has better hands than Looney. He's more active offensively than Looney. But def- but defensively, like the Raptors have, they kind of have the team that, you know, we saw the Warriors have a lot of times where they'll have four or five guys on the floor that can shoot the three at any time, that can spread the floor. And so that's going to negate someone like Bogut. Because at one time he was sticking Pascal Siak. And, you need, that's and so that's why, that's why Looney was yeah. getting those minutes because right. on when they switch, he can – he can guard a wing player. A Looney can guard a wing player at at times. And Bogut is only going to be able to give you a certain amount of minutes because right. he's like 102. Right. But he you still know. should get – he wasn't get. he didn't get any minutes. And, and, let's, and let's also give the Raptors um, their props. And what I mean by this, Kawhi's brought them like this sense of calm, right? Like don't worry about it. Let's not get too worked up. It's going to work out. He comes down. He makes a play. And now they're just, you know, back in mode. And, that, and that's what I saw a lot because I was expecting, and a lot of people were expecting, I don't think I'm alone in this, thinking that the rest of the team would get tight. Moment too big, right? Yeah. But Kawhi never, like, he he, he did he celebrate at all? Like, I saw that post-game interview. It's like, man, even if they win on Monday, I don't think this is going to, do anything. He's not, it, the facial <laughs> expression won't change. Did you see the one where uh, I think it was Norman Powell tried to give him give him a pound? Yeah, I posted that on on my IG. Yeah, he was like, "Dude, we hey, we got we got some big." Well, I don't I, like. Of. I don't think he was he was so like in the zone. I, I, I some people like he's so focused. He's like, "Okay, let's go in the court." It's like that. The 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 fist bump didn't even register. Yeah, so like, so <laughs> talking about Toronto, then. You, you mentioned it's a different team the way it's a certain calm. I think that what changed that was game two. When Golden State made that run, made that run, and Toronto got tight in the third quarter. But then they were able to come back and almost win that game. That was that Kawhi factor. I think it gave them the confidence. And not even just Kawhi. Because you're right, but I'm saying also 
and maybe because you know following his lead, but it felt like the others felt like, okay, we're good. You know what I'm saying? We're good. We went through that. We still battled back. We lost. This is the game. We I, I kept making this reference, and really I was trolling people, but I kept making the reference that Golden State before this game, before last night, Golden State had only won two quarters of the whole series. Yo, we easily talking about a sweep here. We're right. One play away from a sweep. Right. So, one quarter. Well, one shot. The, yeah. Iggy, the Iggy shot. If he don't hit that, we don't know what happens. Right. With, what, or if third. he got to steal before the, yeah. they got to Iggy. Like, like right. You don't know so, my, so I'm saying that gave them confidence. And I think from then on out, you look at game three, Kawhi, it wasn't Kawhi that had the big game, but you saw all of the others play well. Danny Green, Van Fleet. I'm talking about Ibaka. I'm talking about players just coming off the bench is playing well. So for me, I, I think it was actually the prior series that did it. I think them going down to Odom, Milwaukee, then coming back and winning four straight the way that they won four straight kind of set them up perfectly to mm. play Golden State in these finals. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that like like I said, with having you only have one guy who can get his own shot, uh, so it's going to change the roster construction, and it was hard to. I think it was hard for people to predict this series because they were wondering, oh, is is Durant going to play? And I felt like if he didn't play Game Four, he wasn't going to play at all. Mm-hmm. And now I'm reading reports he's he's possible for Game he's Five, not but Jalen. I uh, before the pre game, Jalen said he saw him work out Thursday. And he, from what he saw, he is not even close. But I but I kept saying this before the the series. I said this during the the he not he was in Portland. He it he's he hurt. He's hurt and it's worse than what they're putting on. Yeah, yeah I know he was he tried to go, but he's hey, hurt. It might be torn. Like it, it, it like, I don't well, think it's torn I, well, because he's playing because he's he's able to practice. For the fact that he's able to practice, it's not torn. Well, do you see any footage of this? Practice? Right, right. No, like, yeah, they showed him. They I saw. Like, yeah, they showed him pregame. He was working out uh, game. I think it was game two. He was actually on. Um, like, oh no! I just doing like, shoot around. He was you know like before a, game a strain. You've been out a month. But it's a, with a yeah. Strain. But it's a. But that was. But even with the strain, it was like Doc even said it when he was here. He shouldn't. He's not coming back anytime soon. That's a strain. That's like the uh, unless it was a he, mild strain. The only right. thing is, is he if there's a game seven, maybe there's like a thirty percent. But even if he does come back, what K do you get? You know what I'm saying? What, exactly. Like, like what do you what do you really get? Even if he comes back for the next three, what do you? Really I mean, because like we didn't really expect. Cousins to be back, right? Or, like he, she shouldn't. Yeah. The kind of injury and, he had, he shouldn't be here. And you saw and one of the plays they, they can't move. They, they threw him a, a pass when he was out, and he couldn't jump. He couldn't get to the pass. Uh, he already he, has like a uh, four half inch, inch vertical vert. lead, right? So without it, so and now uh, he can't cousins. move. Cousins, yeah. right? Yeah. So I mean, but like I said, sh- I, I don't. I think with the KD injury for me, um, I think it's more than a strain because the way he looked back when it happened. Well, you don't you don't right. do that with a strain, right? Like he looked back like somebody had kicked him in his kicked him in his calf, right? You know what I mean? And that's what makes it look more to me. Like if, if it was a strain, he the you know what I mean? Like he looked back like somebody has yeah. has sniped him from the from the bleachers. You do that when you it's I mean? when it's torn. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's not a strain. That's thing. that's I'm, but I'm, that's why I was shocked that they were saying it's possible. And I, I think, was like, they put on, but the fact that he has the fact that he has been practicing, like that, lets me know that it's not. It's not as bad as we thought, but I think it's not worse. as bad as we thought. We thought it wasn't as bad. I think they're no. Putting, when he fi- I no, think, I'm talking about when he first injured. Right, that, we thought I, it was bad, but yeah. I'm saying now though, and I'm saying it wasn't as bad as we thought initially. Right, but I think now it's worse than they tried thinking. to put on. Yeah, and I think it was more of a more of a play on the on the series to say he's coming back. Like we don't know when he's coming back. I think in the locker room they're not really. You know, focused on it. You know what I mean. But like everybody else, well, will Katie be back? Will you right. know what I mean? But quickly, Kawhi Leonard is that dude. He that dude. It's right now. I mean, because he's the only one playing, of course. But even after t- this time, at this moment, is he the best player in the league? He, he actually could be. Not not just that. Can you think about how he may have was hold, held back 
from Greg, from Pop over over, over the last couple of years. Right. Like seriously, like this dude is. Mind you, he didn't play last year. Yeah. Right. He's coming so because we saw it at the end of last. We saw it at the end it, of the it, last it, year. Yeah. When he went off on going to stay yeah, in the playoffs, yeah, like. Before he got hurt. He's been kind of held back. So, all I know is, and we'll end it like this. His footwork I, is I good. I feel too. sorry for Tony Parker because San Antonio probably got a hit on him right now. Yeah, well, they, he the one called him out. I know. And then the next year he was gone. But they probably, they, somebody probably ready to jump him or something. Cause, him and Manu. Man, it's just. They sick. And I, right I want to see what that uh, one dude that can't stand quiet got to say on on Monday about. Talking about, you about skip. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yo, this is Jalen Adams with the Atlanta Hawks, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion. You get. There's a lot going on in the world, and your world is always changing. That's why it's important to stay connected. The latest news, the latest entertainment, the newest music. If it's in the air or on the air, it can be in the palm of your hand, wherever you are, with the iHeartRadio app. iHeartRadio. Over 1,500 live radio stations from across the country and over 15 million songs to create your own custom stations. Mm -hmm. Text IHR to 45495 to download the app or listen at iHeartRadio.com. Standard text and data rates apply. What's going on, guys? This is John Collins from the Atlanta Hawks. You listen to the Three Point Conversion Radio. Radio, 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 radio. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Real quick, if you're listening to TuneIn Radio or you go to them, I am not a white woman, but it is our show. I just want you all to know. Uh, what's, what's her name? I was going to say the Costa Report or something. Yeah, I'm not Miss LaCosta, whatever her name is. <laughs> that doesn't even air on this station anymore. <laughs> right, but I'm just letting you all know. So it's, some people's going to get a stop it and probably get chewed out. But either or, I'm not a white woman. <laughs> okay, and this is. But you're listening to that show. Please listen. Just don't listen to the screen if you don't like the way she looks. But anyway, um, the Hawks, the Atlanta Hawks. Yes. So the Hawks came in this season, and they surprised everybody, and had a had a a good season considering. And then the deal was, who are they going to trade? Who who are they going to? Mm-hmm. We're going to trade somebody. Is it going to be Bazemore or Prince or whatever? Right. And as you heard on the news flash, the Hawks traded Torian Prince and a 2021 second round pick to the Brooklyn Nets for Allen Crabb was just to get that contract off. He's he'll be gone at the end of the year and then they get a 17th pick and a 17th overall pick for this year's draft and a protected 2020 first round pick so G I'm gonna ask you because you cover them what do you think the Hawks would do with this what what was the thinking of this trade well uh, well one with getting Allen Crabb you get an expiring contract so then you can – they're looking to be players in free agency next summer. Um, with the – with getting the pick, um, they could go a lot of different ways. I mean, there's really been no indication of what they actually want to do. Uh, they may use that pick and draft somebody. Uh, or they would use that to package uh, that with the eighth and or the tenth pick and – um, go after Anthony Davis or something. I don't know. I don't think that's. I don't think that's going to be enough. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but to go to go after one of these um, big time players that 
will ultimately be a rental. It'll be like a Kawhi Leonard type trade to where he's going to be a free agent, but we're going to make some kind of run. I don't think Atlanta's in that position right now, but um, it's still a, it's still an option if they want to go for something like that. But I, I think they're going to end up um, packaging that with one of the other two first-round picks uh, for – Packaging what? The 17th? The 17th pick. Now, see, I beg to differ. I think they're going to, but to to move to move up. No, yeah. I think they're going to. I think they're going to package the eighth and the tenth pick to move up. Well, I mean, for but for some teams, they might want that seventeenth pick too. Yeah, and that's, I that's what I was thinking. I, I think they're going to package all. Three. But if, if you're doing that, if you're doing that, then uh, they must be trying to get the number one pick to right, bring Zion right. that's or, why or or three to New York and get R.J. Barrett. Nah, I don't think he works. That's not no. Did you not. only need to trade two of those? Yeah, picks. I would agree, but, but yeah, we'll see. But I, I think that right. I think they do they do package. I think it's the eighth and tenth because it's genius because you get a first you got then you get the fifth round or whatever to get because I think it's more so to get Cam. If that's the case, even though but the, the thing is Cam getting surgery now, so it's like but that surgery is not really a. You know, a lingering issue type of surgery. Right. You know okay. I mean? True. True. Um, I mean, eight and the tenth pick, you're gonna move up to what? What do you think? Cleveland at five. Eight and ten could get you up to three. Yeah. But eight, ten, and seventeen, I might get you to one. But I, I mean, no. it's no guarantee. Nah, nah, you're you not, ain't trading. You're, I mean, tra- you're not getting I mean, one I, or uh, two. You're not getting one or two. Yeah, they can try. Right. You, they might I mean, try. They, they, could, they might. They'll try it. Yeah, they don't try it. Like Memphis not giving up on giving job either. They, no, they, they but I don't him. think. But I don't um, think they want job. I mean, because you yeah, already yeah, had trade. Yeah, of course. I'm yeah. just saying. I'm just right. saying that not not having that two number yeah. two pick. You That's know why I, mean? I think it's eight and ten to get you five. Because I think at that point Cam is available. I think you you kind of well, nervous. Well, eight eight and seventeen will get you five. What it might, yeah. Oh no, no. I think it's gonna have to be eight and ten. No, it might, it might, because it's only three spots down. But it's it n- no, it's three spots down, and then even further back for that seventeenth pick. Or, it's no big, big player. Now eight and ten, you can a or unless they do like they did last mm-hmm. year, they just be on the opposite side. All right, you all go ahead and pick Cam at on the, for the eighth pick. We'll pick whoever you want, and we'll give you the tenth pick. Or the seventeen, I mean, they have a lot. Of, um, they have a lot of options. I think that because seventeen they're, they're is going to be more so to fortify their bench. They also have um, three second round picks, right? Right. Yeah. So it, it's so a lot is that of six options. picks? I don't think they're not coming back with six players. No, and right. they didn't even have enough money for this. <laughs> like. Yeah. You know they might have enough money, but that's a lot of players. They'll, not, no, no, they'll, they'll have the money for it. They'll just win just, less games. Yeah, you're not bringing back. You're not bringing in six <laughs> players, yo. Alan Crabb is getting paid. So, man. so look, let's talk about Brooklyn. Brooklyn make this deal, this trade. So now, you're you're looking at a chance to get two max players. Mm-hmm. Now again. And oh, Torin Prince is supposed to be real cool with KD. Yeah, but th- this is where I feel like. I mean, I think Brooklyn won. It was a great trade for both teams because Brooklyn went out because they got they get to free up some space and they ain't want his contract. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you free up some space and then you get Prince. Mm-hmm. Also, here's the key. I don't think. Because it's reports saying that they want to keep, they want to keep D'Angelo Russell and get Kyrie, and then you still have enough to get somebody like a Tobias Harris at power forward. So then for your team, I don't think they're gonna have enough for that. They they should because no, Tobias is gonna demand a whole lot. There's a lot of people looking at him, but they but he's not getting a max like he that. don't command a whole lot. And if you're gonna sign. Kai to a max and D'Angelo Russell is definitely. But the whole lot is like twenty million. Up. They can do that. They'll be or fifteen, seventeen million. They they'll be able to do that with keeping D'Angelo and getting and getting um Kyrie. But here's the deal. So it's, here's some more reports, and I want y'all opinion on this. It's reports that KD and Kyrie are trying to, I guess. That Kai not really Rob, st- but Ka- Kyrie wants KD to go to, to st- Brooklyn. But KD is trying to get Kyrie to come to New York. 
some of the reports I'm hearing is that Kai is willing to go wherever KD is saying, let's go. Well, see, yeah, but it, it just came out that Kyrie wants to – he's really – he really yeah, wants I mean, to go I, to Brooklyn. I, I, so they're trying to persuade each other, persuade each other, all right, let's go here. No, you come here. But either way, it's like they might well, yeah, I mean, end if, up. if KD is going to the Knicks – Kyrie's probably going to Kyrie, go. Yeah. Ky, well, Kyrie's trying to bring KD to, to Brooklyn. Brooklyn. I think, I like I said before, I think it's more their style – there are more people who believe the earth is flat in Brooklyn <laughs> than I, in Manhattan. I mean, I would go to Brooklyn anyway. They got a better owner ownership, right? They got better GM, right? They, well, you, I they, don't want to say they got a better GM because we haven't. Given and they Steve they've Miller's kind of come through. Yet. They've come through their dysfunction, right? And they went through the you know with everything the correct way. They got rid of this. They they lost their picks, but now they're building it up the right way. And then you don't have this owner James Dolan that's over the team that doesn't allow this to happen. That doesn't do that. That put people out because they told him he should sell the team. And, you know, Mikhail Prokhorov doesn't have an album coming out. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, do you think they should go? So, if Brooklyn gets Kyrie and KD, great. Or you, you're you saying you don't think that Tobias would go there. Mm-hmm. I think they have, they have enough to possibly get Tobias and keep Russell. But then even at that point, Kyrie. he's he's, he's third. Third option, right? Like, I think he wants he, to get away can, to try to look into trying to be number one or number two. Well, no, he can be he can be a third option in Brooklyn because in Philly he was the third option there. He was the fourth fourth option, option yeah, fifth, right, right. But that's just leaving the Clippers where he was what the number one option, right? I but is he can he be the best player yeah, on a playoff? He, and team? I think he knows he's not the number one option. You don't have to be the number one option and get you fifteen twenty. And the team mil. he was on, he had. Lou Shots. Williams and and, yeah. and Montrez Harrell playing with him. I mean, I know those aren't those aren't top tier guys, but those are guys that put up the offensive options. Yeah, put up numbers. So all right, so then before we go, do you think if so if they go to Brooklyn, if they go to New York, say Kyrie doesn't sign, so who does Brooklyn get now? Do you now do you get a Jimmy, Jimmy Butler, Butler and and you get Tobias now? And it's going to sound sad, but I think Jimmy Butler's going to kind of be everybody's kind of like third option, right? Like like fall back, fall back plan. Right. You know? Yeah. But do you go with that? Do you go with a Jimmy Butler and Tobias? Um, you you can, um, but I think they also have – then there will be other players they need to bring in. They'll probably need to bring in another veteran point guard to keep Dinwiddie your, your sixth man mm-hmm. or um, another – uh, another big, you know, to give them some more size. You know, so, so you saying another backup point guard? Another a starting caliber no, point guard. I'm saying, for but the you Nets. keep you gonna keep Russell. I though. feel like if, if you they'll keep if they don't get Kyrie, they're keeping Russell. You know, right, you keep so Russell, you keep Russell, you, Russell, you get Jimmy. Jimmy. Well, if, if, you, if they can afford to keep Russell, then yeah, yeah. He, he restricted. Yeah, but but Russell's not a point guard. It's shown that he's not really a point. I mean, guard. but does yeah. that work out though with Jimmy? Because Jimmy can run the point. And I think you use the rest of your money to even out the the bench, right? Like right. Sh- straighten out the bench. Get it. Right. Although, I, again, we're we're still not. Torian Prince is a good pickup. You know, he's a good a good guy to have coming off your bench. You know. Right. So, I mean. So I mean, it's it's, gum, it's going to get interesting. Mm-hmm. It's like I said, this was the first big. Okay, what's going to happen? The sweeten the pot. Now I think, like you said, players like Jimmy, somebody's going to get gold with him. You know, going to be the third option, but what a great third option. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, is this better than the 2010? Would you think the 2010 was the best draft? um, Free agency. Free agency, I'm sorry. Or was it, is it this year? This year is huge. But that year was huge too. Was. You had LeBron, you had Chris Bosch, Amari Stoudemire, Chris yeah, Bosch, Dwayne Wade. But At yeah. that time, <clears throat> Carlos Boozer, and Carlos Boozer was twenty six and 10. 12, twelve, I think. Yeah, we was asking. G, so, do you think the best free agency this year coming up, or two thousand and ten? Um. I think it was 2010 because there were so like it, it was it kind of it changed the how free agency would go now with players teaming up or whatever. You thought LeBron was going here or he was mm-hmm. going to stay. 
Dwayne Wade might go here. It was a lot uh, of big might superstars. go here. It was a lot of superstars, but you thought that they would go to just different places, but then three of them end up being right. on the same But team. I'm just saying as far as just the players available. Uh, Talent-wise, I think that um, I this year, think. yeah, it's this year. I think it was that. 2010. Boozer, you had two top five players in the league. And and um, LeBron and Wade, those are top five players. And Bosch, Bosch is probably like the second Stoudemire. best second mm-hmm. uh, best power forward in the league. But this year it's Durant and Kyrie and Kimba. Jimmy Butler, Kimba Walker. They could get Kimba. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we got to go. We're going to take a quick break. We forgot about Kimba. Yeah, then. we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Talk some yeah. NFL. Kimba not leaving. Have a sports injury? Need to see an orthopedic doctor? Ortho Atlanta is one of Metro Atlanta's largest orthopedic and sports medicine practices, providing orthopedic and sports medicine care for the whole family. With 37 physicians and 14 offices, the practice provides the highest level of care for injury of muscles, joints, bones, and spine. Ortho Atlanta offers convenient access to a full range of musculoskeletal surgeons and specialists. Ortho Atlanta also offers on-site physical therapy, pain management care, MRI imaging, and workers' compensation care. The Ortho Atlanta surgery centers in Austell and Fayetteville provide cost-effective same-day surgical procedures in an accredited outpatient center. Hip, knee, shoulder, back pain? Ortho Atlanta has you covered with specialists in all areas. Same-day appointments, orthopedic care for the whole family. Ortho Atlanta. Atlanta's choice for orthopedic and sports medicine care. Learn more at www.orthoatlanta.com. This is Steve Atwater with the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion. Three Point Conversion. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Before we get into the NFL, and I know he probably did this on purpose, but we're going to bring in <laughs> my man, Sean. NFL was coming. Yeah, Sean Tate. Deshaun, what up? Sean, I know you got something to say, man, about the free agency and everything. What up, though, man? I didn't. I had no idea football, <laughs> this and that. I'm not trying to intentionally intrude on your pigskin segment or nothing like that, man. I just... Uh, I just had a question for you guys about the finals. I didn't. I didn't intend to throw anything off base. Okay. What's I'm just curious to know to what extent uh, you guys think that people's minds will change, or how much you guys even think it will change your minds in terms of the NBA finals uh, in the event that Kevin Durant makes a return, which I think is doubtful and unlikely. But what do we think? Like, how would that change? Yeah, yeah. Do, do you think this series changes, and if so, in what ways in the event that he returns? Definitely. I, I think now if he returns, then the I guess the question is, you, you start him, so do you go very small with Draymond at the center, then you have Iguodala, Curry, you know, and so on. So, or do you bring Iggy off the bench? And that that's the biggest thing. But I think it changes because now Toronto, you have to play them differently. And if they were smart, I know he's not going to play heavy minutes, but I would put – I would keep Durant in most of the time when Curry in so they can't do the box one. But so do me, they win? Me, me personally. So I don't, I don't, no. I don't think initially it changes much. 
So I think that even before KD was ruled out of most of the series, I was saying that this was going to be a good series anyway just because of the Raptors being one of the best defensive teams in the league. Now if you bring KD back in a game five, which he hasn't played in 45 days, almost 50 days, he already got to get caught up with that. So he's going to be on a minute restriction. And then what KD are you getting? By the time he's probably in in um, in mode, you're probably in game six or if there is going to be a game seven before you're even able to see the KD that we're used to seeing. But I think that with that KD, with KD, any type of KD where he can give you points, it the, the, the bonus is not just the points, but it's going to change the way you have to play them. Now Curry is free like he was before. Clay is more free now. Now you can't double. I, I, you, I you can't double at all. So because you can't double, that takes away – Stopping them. But, see, I think one of the biggest things with that is you got Kawhi sticking them. You don't have to double. No, but what I'm saying is they've been doubling them. They've been doubling. Right, you can put Kawhi on there, but they've been doubling, you know, at times. You can't do that. And that's what has messed up Golden State is the double team. So, I don't know. That's a great question, man. We appreciate you, Sean. But in this NFL, Carson Wentz got $128 of them things. Man. For four years, four, four years, man, this guy's been on the shelf. He's been hurt, but you're paying nowadays. It used to be you pay them on what they've done. And we've seen that happen with Matt Ryan, Joe Flacco, you know, back in the day. Now, even, even Russ, but now, for the most part, you see people getting paid on what they can do because they're scared to lose a quarterback. Do you agree with that? Uh, I, I really don't. And not just that. Carson Wentz hasn't even won a playoff game, hasn't even played in the playoff game, has he? Nope. Yeah, he got four years, 128, and it's like, what is it, 40-something guaranteed, 50 guaranteed? What is it, G? 107 guaranteed. He got 107 guaranteed. So, do but, but G, do you think, do you think it's warranted? Do you think he's, how, what do you like about it? Or do you like it? I should ask. Um, it it's kind of a it's a sign of what the what the market is for quarterbacks to where you have to, if you have a guy, you gotta keep him. You gotta you gotta sign him to you gotta do what you can to keep him because. Uh, quarterbacks don't hit the open market uh, if they're any good. Yeah, ever. <laughs> I mean, Kirk Cousins is the most recent, but we, there's still questions we, on if he's actually good. any good. <laughs> right. But normally you don't see that. With, like Aaron Rodgers wasn't going to be a free agent anytime soon. Drew Brees was never going to be a free agent. Matt Ryan was never going to be a free agent. Uh, Peyton Manning became a free agent because – he got hurt, missed the whole season. The team had the number one pick, and Andrew Luck's out there. We got to take him, so we got to move on from Peyton. So it's only in those kind of circumstances in which a, a star caliber quarterback even hits the open market. But when you think you have a quarterback, you got to keep him. That's why Russell got his money. That's why Derek Carr got his money. If you think you have a quarterback, you got to pay him. Yeah. And, that, and that's why they build up the team while the quarterback is on his rookie deal. Build that team up. Pay those players a lot of upfront money so that when his contract starts coming on the books, they're getting paid so low where it doesn't kill you as bad as it would. But you, you have to pay him because, like G said, I agree because think about it. You don't have a choice, really. You Well, <laughs> you don't, but not just that, but just for the simple fact that if he's going to be your future quarterback, you want to show him that you trust him, which means he sees that now nah, he's all in for you. I mean, I just I feel like they could have waited a year still. They, he still had two years remaining on his deal. They could have waited waited the rest of this season out to see what was going to happen and, and whatever you know. And the reason I say that is because he has not played a full season, like, right? And but he's been yeah, but he's been great. He he's been and a back is nothing to play with. And I think at this point, though, they wanted to kind of get this done 
before the contract ends. You don't want him going into the last have, year of no, his you don't bad, want bad mouth, right. bad taste. You know, they're they're going to pick up the option, but like, okay, do we? They had to decide probably sooner than they wanted to. Right. Is this the guy we want to commit to long term? And because the money don't start till. Uh. 20, 20, yeah, 21. That's right. why you do it now. That's mm-hmm. why you don't want to wait. Like you said, you you know, you take that chance. But now my question is, you look at Dak Prescott. Now what does he, he get? He is doing the Birdman well, hand rub right now. Here. He's. Him and Jared Goff. <laughs> <laughs> Jared Goff done won a playoff game. He's, he's, he's not he been the Super Bowl. That's what yeah. I'm saying. He hasn't been they, injured. They, they both have won playoff yeah, Dak, games. Yeah. Dak, Dak has led his team. You know what I mean? Paper. What's they going to guarantee going to be? Not just them. Imagine Pat Mahomes. Whew. Yeah, I mean, but he got a few more years. That's three years Yeah, from so now. he's good. Like, they're not even worried. They don't even worry about him. But because they're doing basically like what the – sorry, what the Rams have done uh, – when you have a young quarterback, you pay everyone else on the team because right. you don't have to pay that quarterback right now. But when you pay that quarterback, uh, you probably you want to do that um, probably ahead of time and then kind of worry about building the team around them later. So the, the Eagles can still contend, even with paying Carson Wentz all this money. They still have a two-year window. But right. after that, then they're going to have to make some decisions and make, about make, other players. Make smart moves and things like that. That's when we're going to see what, what your GM can do at that point. So Carson Wentz gets his money. You have Dak Prescott. Does he get all of or even more money? Do you think he deserves? Because, yes, their camp is going to say, well, look, this joker hadn't played a whole season. We've we've been in the playoffs. I played in the playoff game, and I'm and, I'm, and I'm the unquestioned leader of this team. As opposed to you know all the rumors that was coming out about Carson, how right. he was, and all of that. So, but as Dallas management, do you pay him that much? And the thing is, it seems like it might happen because Jerry Jones, as much as people hate him or the stuff he does, you know I'm cool with him because he you know he gave me a shout out, but no. Nah, but uh, <laughs> even though he has been that guy, you know, he says some bogus mm-hmm. stuff, but he's always look loyal and look out for his guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Jerry. But he's, done, he's worked out for his guys. Right. You know, I mean, he always work out, work out contract, pay them. Right. So, G, you're the Dallas fan. You're, you're, that's your team. I'm, I'm expecting some kind of mega deal. Uh, he's clearly outplayed his fourth round rookie contract. Uh, and it's like I said before, when you think you have a quarterback, you got to pay him. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if he's going to get more than Wentz or Goff, but it's going to be really close. But they also had the decision to make about um, Ezekiel Elliott, who's in that same draft. Amari mm-hmm. Cooper. Uh, Amari Cooper. Uh, they're going to have to give him an extension. So they're going to have to um, – they're going to – They're. it's going to get done. But as far as, like, the comparison to the other players, that's what a lot of these contracts are based on. Mm-hmm. Like, whoever gets theirs first, then the, the next, next guy's supposed to get goes, more. Right, right, right. And, and see – Do you expect the – Go ahead. Do you expect a hometown discount? Heck no. Because you, you know this is this, this is this is this is first con- like he but, don't have no money. But he don't. You but know wait, what I mean? wait, wait, wait. That's a good point because I was about to bring that up, and you said it. They st- this the first extension, right? Nah, 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 right. I need all no this. Discount. I need all this. But look, the first, here, But here's the thing, though. You just said it. When you look at um, Carson Wentz, who are they paying? Who else they're gonna pay? Nobody. Not like that. Not right. giving them. All right, this is. Right. I know we don't. They don't say they max, but giving Jeffrey them max deal. Didn't they get Jeffrey yeah, but a I know. Bit? I know yeah. NFL don't go about max deal, but let's just play that game. Right. Nobody else is getting getting the max. Right. Russell Wilson. No one else is getting the max. Right. Kansas City Chiefs. Right now, no, no one, one else is getting the max, especially because they didn't messed up. Right. 
Dallas. Dallas. You get, you better give Zeke. You the got match. to because if you don't, then Dak not going to be able to do what Dak. So did. are you going to tie up your whole team? You you kind of don't have a choice. Or is he going to give them? Is but that's what that's. But would would Dak take a uh, a discount in the camera on on footage on camera, and then Jerry slide him that sixty mil. Under the table. See that's see that's part of what I was saying with the, with we'll the never entire know that. thing. You know what I mean? Like you sign you sign Dak and then you get Zeke's money. Now your team is going to be kind of fluttering fluttering around because they can't sign anybody else. They don't have money. They don't. That's a good question. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. It is time for the stop it segment. It's coming up next. What's happening? It's your man Big T doing big things. Y'all know what it is. ATL Hawks official DJ and Rap City Forever. You're checking out the Three Point Conversion Radio. You dig? You are tuned into WWE Hawkville. AM 1100. The opinions expressed during the sponsored programs on this station are strictly those of the program hosts, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of Beasley Broadcast Group, this station, its staff, other advertisers, or agencies. Big ups to our Sports Lounge crew for keeping the airwaves blazing each and every Saturday. But I want to send another special shout out to our team of writers at The Three Point Conversion. You can visit us at thepointconversion.com. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. How about the gram? How about iHeart? How about Freaker Radio? How about wherever you need it, baby? We got you covered. No mercy. Don't let up on them. Go hard on them, Mr. Controversy. Hit them with the stop it button. We are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Of course, we want to take this time to thank everyone who is supporting us, listening, following us. We appreciate you, and we ask you to support the Three Point Conversion, the company in itself. Uh, We got a lot of big things going on. We have um, also made it to where the Three Point Conversion will have a radio show on Dash Radio but nothing but net channel. That's the NBA WNBA channel. And it's for the WNBA. It's for the Atlanta Dream, which the show is called Dreaming with the Three Point Conversion. So um, look out for that and just continue to support us. We appreciate it. All right. It is now time for the most infamous, the most famous Stop It segment. Let's get it. Stop 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 it. Yes. S-T-O-P, new word, I-T. Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. All right, D, it's on you. What do you have, sir? So my stop it this week is going to go to Paul Pierce. Uh, The reason he getting this stop it is because he finally admitted the other night um, is that the reason he left in a wheelchair was to actually use the bathroom. And um, one of the questions was like, well, why you had to get in a wheelchair? Well, he's like, he couldn't hold it. Like, it was number two, and he, like, <laughs> he could not deal with it. He needed to be wheeled to the <laughs> wheeled to the bathroom, man. So get that stopping, man. We thought you was hurt. He had his Willis Reed moment, and the Stop reason he went in there is because he needed to use the bathroom. And that would go down in Stop history. It. That would go down in history as far as, like one of the memorable plays, plays. like in the finals <laughs> history. That's messed up. All right. My stop it goes to Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson said that he is setting his eyes on another. Well, not another. He said he's setting his eyes on 2,000 yards this season. 2,000 yards what? Rushing. <laughs> 
<laughs> like on Madden? No. <laughs> he said. <laughs> he going he gonna to draft himself in the – what's the draft where they get the old players? Like, like Draft King? Yeah. Or no, the one where, where – Oh, you, Draft the, Champions? The, 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 oh, in, no, Madden, in Madden, when you're in Madden, Madden and you're able to go get the old players where they were real oh, good. Oh, the ultimate team? Yeah, that's what yeah. – that's even on Madden, he got to be the ultimate team. Just stop it. Stop it, <laughs> yeah. so stop it for get, that. Yeah, you're not getting no two bucks. And I rocks with AP. Right. Okay, um, mine goes to uh, Microsoft um, and Xbox. Uh, I know the gaming thing is a it's a the e sports is a big thing now, um, but they have their uh, Xbox has their own line of body wash and deodorant what? for all the gamers out there. <laughs> um, I guess they had to see something that if it has an Xbox logo on it, that maybe they should use it just to remind themselves that they should take a shower <laughs> and put wow. on deodorant some of the time. So my stop, it goes to uh, Microsoft and Xbox for, uh, for <laughs> well, actually the gamers <laughs> who actually buy it. My stop, it goes to them because you had to see that logo to remind yourself to take a shower. Yeah. Stop, stop it. it. Take that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold That's that. crazy, man. <laughs> All right. That concludes our Stop It segment. We're going to take a quick break. We're about to talk some boxing. The sport that never dies. We'll be right back. Let me break down to y'all what's so dope about the three-point conversion. First of all, everybody is a fan of the game first. Second of all, everybody is a student of the game second. And third of all, we're the average sports fan just like everybody else. We're not coming in here, walking with our nose tipped high, acting snooty, acting brand new. This is a grassroots organization. Bar none. The three-point conversion where fans' opinions matter. Be sure to visit the website wwwthe number 3 pointconversioncom Get your fix, get your articles, multimedia, and everything else that you as a sports fan need. So again, the three pointconversioncom It's where it's at, man, where fans' opinions matter. Happy Saturday, sports fans. It's your boy, Sherm, a.k.a. the Lord of the Beats, and you are currently inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge with my man's Mr. Controversy, the intellectual, and, of course, my dog, G, behind the boards. Cheers to the freaking weekend. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. And we have now the 2000, G said, make sure you say 2018. The 2018 <laughs> Battleground Show, Damian Adams from The Real Deal with Damian Adams. He's also the Three Point Conversion boxing expert. What's going on, Damian? Doing good, man. Just listening to my favorite sports show on this beautiful Saturday morning. You know, chilling, feeling nice. Yes, sir. Man, it's beautiful over there. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's it's cloudy night, and rainy night, over here. It's night, night over here. Hey, but yeah, yeah but G G started laughing when I said uh, battlegrounds. He started <laughs> he started laughing <laughs> when I said battlegrounds. Hey, champ. you know, the, the, every once in a while the champ goes down. You know, but Rudy T once said, "Never underestimate the heart of a champion." So I'll be back. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds like a uh, like rematch. Rematch. Okay, we Chalo. might get that going. We might get that going. Definitely. So we're going to start this off the right way. So after that uh, Josh Ruiz, the Joshua and the Ruiz fight, what do you think this does for the state of the heavyweight boxing? Oh, it's it's great. I think it puts heavyweight boxing back on the mainstream. Like a lot of people, like myself, you know, have known about these heavyweights for a while. 
who are diehard boxing fans, but for people who are just been, you know, casual fans who have been really tuned in since, you know, the Lance Lewis days for heavyweights, this has brought their attention back. You see somebody like Andrew Ruiz, who people like to make fun of because he doesn't look like your normal heavyweight champion, going in there and defeating Anthony Joshua, who is the prototype looks wise as a heavyweight champion, doing that and bringing the regular man back into it, you know, the dad bod, as they say, back in the heavyweight boxing and making it look so good and in such a you know, great way to knock somebody out. I think that's a great service for boxing and brings everybody into it. Yeah, I, I'm still shocked that that happened like that, you know, and that, that meme they have for Anthony Joshua when the spirit walked out and went back to the U.K. or something like that, the airport and all that, <laughs> that was crazy. You talking about with the doctor yeah. sold out. Yeah, that was crazy, So and everything. So now with this happening, how does it affect Dante Wilder? I mean, Dante was ready, been, been dreaming about this fight, now he doesn't. It doesn't happen. Like, what happens next with him? So, if I'm Deontay Wilder, I'm rooting for Joshua in the rematch. And I'm rooting for Joshua to have an impressive performance in the rematch. So, if Joshua comes out in the rematch later this year and just dominates Ruiz and makes it look like it was just a blimp in the radar when he lost, that brings the hype back to the rematch or to the Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua match, to where you can make that big money again. Now, if Joshua loses, and Ruiz looks impressive, Deontay Wilder could still make big money fighting against Ruiz, but with Joshua, that money's totally different because he's such a big star over in the U.K. He has the big kind of, he had the contract with the zone, and that, that superstardom brings dollars in. You know, even though Ruiz is the great story, Joshua's still a bigger star. So I'll, if I was Deontay Wilder, I'd be rooting for Joshua to have an impressive match and a rematch so I can get that big money later. And now I know that with my power, if I'm Wilder, I got the you know maybe the most powerful punch in boxing history. I know I could take this guy down if I just saw Ruiz do it. So I'm rooting for Joshua to win the rematch, so I can go ahead and get that money in an easy way later on, probably next year. But even with that, just to piggyback on that a little bit, if Joshua wins the fight but doesn't dominate it, are we looking at a three? Yeah, if if, if it's a close fight, like he wins by decision, and it's something that could be debatable, you're definitely looking at a third match, and that's what you know. Boxing fans love. That's what boxers love. If you get that third match, the money it brings in, the people that watch. Like, whenever you have something like this that leads to two and three fights between fighters, that's when you get, you know, the every man watching, every woman watching, grandma, grandpa, your third cousin twice removed. You get everybody <laughs> watching the fight that's going to be there. So that's, that's what you love to see as a boxer because it brings in the dollars. Okay, is there a heavyweight that's worth what that's worth fighting or coming up in the ranks that we should know about? Uh, there's there's a, a lot of heavyweights that's coming up. Um, June fifteenth, you have Tyson Fury versus Tom Swartz. Uh, a lot of people don't know about Swartz. A lot of people are underestimating him. You could have another situation where Tom Swartz could be another Andrew Ruiz who shocks the world. He's somebody who's very powerful, and Ruiz and I mean Fury, excuse me, has somebody we've seen go down against Wilder. Now, of course, Wilder has. You know, otherworldly power, but that could be an interesting fight on June 15th that's going to also be on the zone as well. So I think that's something that you should look forward to as far as that heavyweight. There's a few other young heavyweights that still have to build their resume, but that's a fight you guys should look forward to. And yeah, next week, actually, yeah. Mm, okay. And once again, we're here live with Damian Adams, the 2018 Battleground Champs, but from The Real Deal with Damian Adams, which you can find that show on the Three Point Conversion podcast station. Also, you can find it with Potomatic and Damien everywhere. Um, but you can check him out. Check his YouTube and everything um, at The Real Deal with DA. So, um, last question, man, we have to ask you is Does this make or put more of a demand on the arrow slash Eero Spence, <laughs> Terrence Crawford <laughs> fight for boxing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my man Errol Spencer called him Eero here at Three Point Conversion. Um, <laughs> he, uh, unfortunately, there's been no news about that particular fight happening. Uh, with Errol, there's been rumors about him maybe going up to fight Canelo later this year. That would be maybe even more massive than him fighting Terrence Crawford. So if he go, if he wants to move up to middleweight to fight Canelo. That would be absolutely nuts. That's another fight that would bring in crazy dollars. They probably would do it at 
um, the stadium in Dallas, Jerry World. You know, he'd probably, you know, be down there, you know, saying thank you to Raphael after we after they after they had to make it all that money with that stadium. Um that would be <laughs> that would be huge if they did that. Um we haven't heard anything about Terrence Crawford and what his next fight is gonna be. Has, nothing has been announced yet. Hopefully he they make something to where he gets to fight the other people that's not in his promotion. Right. So he's on the top rank and a lot of the other welterweights who we want to see Terrence Crawford fight are under Premier Boxing Champions, under the Showtime brand. So hopefully they can make some deal where he starts fighting them because there's not too many other fighters in his particular promotion and top rank that are good enough to where we want to want to actually see him fight them. So hopefully that's what's happening right now. They're making deals where he can fight maybe the winner of Thurman versus Pacquiao, which is happening in July, or something like that to where we can get some quality content from Terrence Crawford. But Errol Spence is out here trying to make these big money fights. So either if it's not Crawford, he's trying to get Canelo, or he's trying to – you know, do something big at 154, maybe. So he's he's out here looking for the big fights. So you got to respect that out of a fighter. Wow. Yeah, that would that would be big. Good old Eero. All right. So <laughs> we thank See, Damian, he had that question. <laughs> yeah, we thank Damian Adams for coming on. And once again, you can follow him on Instagram, Twitter. But like I said, you got to watch his videos. He, he does his. Um, I guess singing, all po- yeah, stuff. all of that. But post game with the Saints boxing, anything that's relevant, you know. And this show has got a great show. And once again, as follow him at the Real Deal with D A. Am I correct? It's correct, right? Yeah, the real, yeah, the Real Deal W D A on all platforms. W-D-A. The Real Deal with Damian Adams podcast. Right. All right, man. Appreciate you, man. We've been looking looking forward to a rematch soon. Maybe sooner than you think. We will see. But all right, man, appreciate you. No, no, I appreciate right, y'all, man. No problem. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back to talk some Major League Baseball. Keep it locked. There's a lot going on in the world. And your world is always changing. That's why it's important to stay connected. The latest news. The latest entertainment. The newest music. If it's in the air or on the air, it can be in the palm of your hand. Wherever you are. With the iHeartRadio app. iHeartRadio. Over 1,500 live radio stations from across the country. And over 15 million songs to create your own custom stations. Mm -hmm. Text IHR to 45495 to download the app or listen at iHeartRadio.com. Standard text and data rates apply. Have a sports injury? Need to see an orthopedic doctor? Ortho Atlanta is one of Metro Atlanta's largest orthopedic and sports medicine practices, providing orthopedic and sports medicine care for the whole family. With 37 physicians and 14 offices, the practice provides the highest level of care for injury of muscles, joints, bones, and spine. Ortho Atlanta offers convenient access to a full range of musculoskeletal surgeons and specialists. Ortho Atlanta also offers on-site physical therapy, pain management care, MRI imaging, and workers' compensation care. The Ortho Atlanta Surgery Centers in Austell and Fayetteville provide cost-effective, same-day surgical procedures in an accredited outpatient center. Hip, knee, shoulder, back pain? Ortho Atlanta has you covered with specialists in all areas. Same-day appointments, orthopedic care for the whole family. Ortho Atlanta, Atlanta's choice for orthopedic and sports medicine care. Learn more at www.orthoatlanta.com. Yeah, this is CJ Edwards with Chicago Cubs, known as Carl Edwards Jr. I am now on the three-point conversion. I'll let you boy. All right, we are back inside the three point conversion sports lounge. And the MLB, MLB, uh, has been it's been a big season a lot of big deals 
this reminds me of when I was younger. You know, we was coming up watching baseball. Whew, a lot of stuff going on. You know, um, and it was real, real interesting, and, right? Right. And then you start starting. Besides Houston, you start starting to see like some of the teams that we grew up watching being on top, like at how it was, for instance. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we start off with the American League. Yankees are still leading that division, American American League East, uh, by half a game over Tampa Bay. They're 39 and 23. Uh, Boston is trying to make their way back, man. They're six and a half games back. Yankees got a lot of injuries. You got to see if they can keep up what they're doing with all the injuries. It's almost right. miraculous. Yeah, and the crazy thing is when they come back, like, they just got Gregorius back. Right, yeah, yeah. And then in the AL Central, I used to mess with this this uh, <laughs> division. <laughs> but Minnesota is for real. Yeah, they got some ballers over there. They got some ballers. What? So What's the, what tell me, do you on? think, yeah, they're 42 and 20. Do you think this team can really compete? Yeah, and I think that they're showing it. Like, there's always this one team, right, that when you're playing during a season, they start out fast, you're like, okay, they're going to drop off. They don't look like that they're they're even thinking about dropping off right now. Right. No, you're right. Then in the West, AOS, Houston is 44 and 21. They have a 10 point, I mean, 10 game lead, I'm sorry, over the Texas Rangers. Houston is doing what they're doing, so we know how they are. They it's, they kind of remind me of the, the this is like the, AFC East. Mm-hmm. Houston always going to have a lead and be on top of this, like New England Patriots over the Dolphins and so on. All right, in the NL East, you have the Philadelphia Phillies. They have a two-game lead over the Atlanta Braves, which should get interesting. We're going to get into that. Mm-hmm. And they're at 36-27. And the Chicago Cubs have, are actually should be tied, tied right? with Milwaukee mm-hmm. Brewers, they're 35 and 27, and Milwaukee is 36 and 28. St. Louis, three and a half games back. And then you have the National League West, LA Dodgers have a nine game lead over the Colorado Rockies. Dodgers are 43 and 21. So, a um, couple of signings happened after the draft, and that's what everybody was waiting for. And I honestly questioned the Braves for waiting. To get Kimbrel, mm-hmm. I, I thought that they should have went for him, but you know they were waiting like everyone else after the draft, and they lost out. But they did sign Dallas Keuchel, a former Cy Young winner. We know pitchers could have one bad year or so, or uh, not bad, but it, it wasn't bad. It was you know I think it was like twelve and twelve last year, but yet still you get him. Do you start him? And if you start him, which pitcher are they moving to the bullpen? Oh, they definitely going to start him. Uh, what they gave him one year for $13 million or something right. like that? Yeah, they definitely going to start him. Who do you move to the bullpen? I guess that's the that's the biggest thing. Do I mean, who? I mean, I mean, a lot of people are giving Julio, I mean, Julio Flack. You know, Julio Tehran Flack. And to me, he's their rock. He's the most lovable guy in that clubhouse. But now bringing in Keiko, this might take put pressure him off long, him, or, or may, they may put him in long relief. Ah, and, and, yeah. and, and he can become he can be a spot starter. Right. He's kind of been that throughout his career anyway, like long reliever at times, spot starter here and there. So I mean, that's 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 definitely an option. But you you're not gonna get Keiko out there. You, you're not gonna right. Start not gonna start him. him. So do you think now this boosts the Braves to where? They can be that team to now, because pitching has been the reason why the Braves Braves should be. They should have six or seven more wins, and it's all because of the bullpen. But if you get Keiko and you get him rolling, do you think this is the start of him getting to that next level? I think it definitely could be. They the got Braves. they got Mike Soraka out there pitching like ridiculously. As long as he can keep it up and they get a couple other people um, doing what they need to do, then I definitely think it, it will be. We know that they're going to hit. We know mm-hmm. that, you know, um, they're definitely going to hit. That's not much of the issue. The issue is always going to be pitching. Uh, we know what Albee is going to do. Um, so we know what Acuna going to do. We know they're going to get out there and 
ball out like they did last night. Right. So as long as the pitching will be there, I think that they have more than enough opportunity to go ahead and do that with the Phillies lo- losing the cutching, which is I think is was, well, that was, was big. big. Yeah. Um, even though Jay Bruce has come in, you know, the last few days he's really really put the bat to the ball. Um, <clears throat> it's a it's a it's a it's a wide open division. You know, right. I mean, that division they they really can do it. So if that pitcher can hold up, then they definitely can take advantage of the situation. All right. So now the Cubs, they were the prize winner. <laughs> Kimbrel. We didn't see this, even though I was hoping this. Of course, I'm a Cubs fan, but I was hoping this. But we see it now. What does this do for them? Man, it's like that that year that um, Jim Edmonds came right, and like he just started hitting it, and, and it just took him off. I think it's gonna it's it's, it's gonna be great because now. It allows you to not worry about Morrow as much, right? Like, is he coming back when he's coming back? Doesn't even matter if he even comes back. If he comes back, he's not going to be the closer anymore, right? But then it takes Strope out of that out of that closer position and puts him back in the setup role in the eighth inning. It takes um, what's the other guy, Stephen Chichik? It takes him from having to be the setup man and mm-hmm. puts him back at the seventh. So now, and 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 don't forget, CJ is playing a whole lot better since he went down and came back up. So easily, if your starters can get you to the sixth inning, seventh inning, and we had Cole Hamels out there last night, eight innings of no hit, uh, uh, no a uh, shutout, eight innings, no walks, ten strikeouts, and a shutout. You can do that, get into the sixth, seventh inning, and then you got this guy coming in, lights out, shutting him down. It, it, that's been their Achilles heel all year, right? Like the 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 bullpen, right? So if they can do that, then it's it's gonna take them to another level. You got if you you don't even need you Darvish to go eight anymore, right? Like he, it's okay for him when he comes in. He's gonna go what five or six instead of expecting them to do more. So I think it's really gonna open them up to take over this division. Does it now? Does it put them in a place where now you say okay, they're the favorites, or you still have to worry about the Dodgers? Well, I don't. I, I wouldn't say they're the. Fa- I say that they're favorites for that. For that that division, that division okay. right, the the NL Central, right, but not you don't want to say for the whole the whole National League because yeah, and I was gonna it, say because it, it really hasn't been pitching that right. has caused the Cubs to lose, right? Well, like the this, th- well, this year it, it kind of has been, but not not from you think it's been bullpen has been yeah, bad, but yeah. not like and then and then you Darvish not being able right. to do this, but that's and, from the and, start. And then, but that's what I'm yeah. saying more so the right. starters. Yeah, like everybody's kind of getting it now. You know, Lester's out there doing his thing. It's kind of right. coming around. Even you Darvish in the in the games he's not winning. He's only giving up three runs. But the biggest thing with him, he's only going five and a third. Five and two thirds. So now your your bullpen is taxed. But again, this helps in that situation. Right. And I think another thing with them is the cargo that, that pick up for cargo. I think that that's real big. I think it's bigger than what people are paying attention to. So you don't need him to go out there and be that cargo that he was. You know, mm-hmm. uh, batting three hundred a silver slug. You just need him to come in and bat two fifty, get a double every once in a while, get a home run when he can, play some pretty good defense, and he's been pretty much doing that. Quickly going back to the Braves. Now that they do have their starter in Keiko, does it make them the favorites of that division? Or do you still say Philly? I say that they're neck and neck, right? Because Philly has the experience. Um, and, you know, they got Ari- Arietta, uh, They got uh, Bryce Harper. And just having that bat in there, re- regardless of what's going on, you're going you're gonna to kind of be there. So I don't want to say that either is above you know each other they can it, it can kind of either go either way you know what i mean right all right there you have it we will see what happens with those teams really looking to see what the braves do and of course i'm definitely happy to see what the cubs would do all right so we're going to take a quick break and g will have some stories for us in the segment is this really happening keep it locked <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Channel 2's Taisha Fernandez, and you need to listen to the Three Point Conversion. Three Point Conversion. Hey folks, Handsome Josh is here to reveal some big news to all the AM 1100 listeners. I have an app. 
That's right, you can now check out all your favorite programs right here on The Real with The Real 1100 app. Whether it's sports, entertainment, or lifestyle, The Real 1100 definitely has you covered. So why don't you just tell me how much it's going to cost me? And here's the best part. It's available in your Google Play or Apple App Store, and it's free to download. Actually, you can count me in on this one. So download The Real 1100 app today and stay in tune with The Real. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cat Williams, and you are listening to Three Point Conversion Radio. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. It is time for Is This Really Happening? We're going to send it over to G. All right. Uh, so got a couple of stories for you. To ask the question, is this really happening? So the first story comes from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, this might not be for the. Uh, well, I'm sorry. This comes from Bridge. Is there Bridgeport, Illinois? Mm-hmm. OK, mm-hmm. so this is Bridgeport, Illinois. I don't know what it is already. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is not for the uh, faint, faint of, of heart. heart. <laughs> so um, mm. there is a masked man, <laughs> masked man, <laughs> uh, who has been smearing poop on homes and cars in the Bridgeport area. <laughs> And sometimes <laughs> hiding it under the car door handles <laughs> oh. so victims can't see it. So what's killing me, right? Of course <laughs> that, right? But he's masked. Masked, too, right? He's a masked like, man. He will put a mask on to make sure. Though. Like, they got video of him, but he got a mask on. So. Wow. Um, so, wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that, that's really happening. <laughs> And it's happened at least a dozen times. And one person has even caught him on video (laughs) as he rubbed poop. Uh, No one's sure if it comes from a human or a dog or some other animal. Uh, One person uh, said that he almost fell for the trick. He went to his car and was about to open the door and saw saw poop under the handle. Saw a little bit of hanging. Wow. He, yeah, he said, I some. really didn't want it to be poop, but you know it is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really want it to be. I ain't want that to be. I ain't want it to be, but it is. <laughs> um, so uh, what, what do you guys think about someone like, like well, this is. They need to find him. But then somebody said they saw him. Yeah, it's a video of him. Oh, but video. He got it's a mask a video of him. But he, it's a, he has on a mask. He's a masked man. He's a masked Poo poo dude, <laughs> poo poo spreader. I, I I do wonder like if he's like 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 smearing it or placing it. Is he wearing gloves? I, I would I would hope he is, but I think he's smearing it because he's also putting it on homes too. So yeah. he's like he's like walking. For <laughs> so but my thing is, if he gets caught, what what happens? Destruction of property, vandalism, vandalism. But nothing it, really. Nothing? So do, do y'all? It depends think, on who catch him. Yeah, but do, I'm saying you're right, right, right. But do y'all think this is a joke that this guy is doing because he know that possibly? Apparently, it's a joke for him. I mean, for him, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying, but like him and his buddies, like yo, we gonna. It might be. I wonder if it's different guys, but either or, that they can't. It's not like they're going to jail. So you think it's one of those like, yeah, we about to have some fun. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I know that it's that, but you also got to be careful because well, you messing with some people, kind of, you mess with the wrong people, man, and it will go down. So um, he still hasn't been caught. How uh, long has this been, been going on? It's happened it's been like 12 weeks. times. It's been a few weeks. Like the dude just, look, man, that's bogus. So, okay. So, so okay. So, <laughs> What happens, D, you get to your car, and you're like, all right, let me open my door, and you uh, you see it. 
how you getting in or what you what you got <laughs> you just gotta do what you gotta do to clean it or you paying I'm going to the car wash. I'm looking for a, a crackhead, man. Come hey, hey. man, go five dollars, man. Go ahead and clean <laughs> this up right fast, man. Going to the car wash. I'm getting the car through the back. <laughs> Some is he some? Is he putting it on all the, just the driver's side? I'm sure probably just the driver's side. Well, yeah, I mean, unless if he if he if he's putting it on <laughs> the passenger side, then it's kind of like he knows his victim, <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, but uh, if you can't do nothing, man, you got to figure it out. You got to go said, get you some rubber gloves. The, and, the good you thing is, you got to trip, trip. You can open the door like you know, get, get in the back and yeah. climb over the seat. <laughs> <laughs> Go straight to the car wash. Wow. That's But hold on. What about this? What happens if you catch him? What if you come out oh, and he's spreading uh, it on, on, on your what if he spread it on your, your dough handle to your house? Damn, <laughs> I'm probably if if the judge sees fit, hopefully the judge sees fit, so other than that, I'm probably going to jail. You say you going to jail? Yeah. <laughs> man, I'ma whoop that dude. So I I'm, I'm I'm getting his bag good and putting it in his oh, face. Oh, him, yep. Stomp it on his face. Yeah, I'm holding him down. And then if it's a kid. That's same thing. No, I'm doing that too, but oh, he yeah. he really. Same thing. I might throw him in a tub, bud. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to get petty with you. Man, my homie's going to grab it. We're going to wrap you up. We're going to tie you up. We're going to make you feel it. <clears throat> I'll put a sign on him. For everybody. Put a sign on him with the. All of it talking about I like poop. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it wouldn't say that though, but yep. it would. And have a sign. This the one that's been doing it. Yep. And put it on on live. So oh, anybody yeah. that's been anybody that done got caught and done put their hands in it, this who did it. Come go, come get your go Facebook come, come live. Go Facebook live and like. As a matter yeah, of fact, man. make it a big thing. All right, y'all. And we are waiting for some more. You know how they do. Yep. Waiting for some more people to come, come on and look. Yeah. In thirty seconds, we're gonna pull off the mask. We're gonna see who, see this, who this guy, guy is. is. Yep. <laughs> I would have got away for it. I would have got away with it if it wasn't for you pesky kids. That's <laughs> crazy, man. All right, so our other story, um, uh, not so scatological, um, but it, it may be a little diabolical still. Um, so some people may have heard this week the story of uh, a player, a football player named Damon Sheehy Giuseppe. Uh, he is a wide receiver who is now in training camp with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, he's at OTAs, um, long shot to make the roster, but the story of how he even got to this point to be in OTAs is quite interesting. Um, so he was a junior college, all American kick returner for Phoenix college, uh, not the university of Phoenix, but Phoenix college. And in 2016, uh, he was a walk. He was a walk on there, I believe. And so he didn't get a scholarship after his All American season. Uh, so um, he had to leave school. He couldn't afford to pay for school because he didn't get the scholarship. And uh, so he was a few credits from graduating, but he couldn't afford to continue. So he sent his uh, game film to every Division I university he could. Um, and he even went visited those schools unannounced. Uh, did not get any um, feedback or callbacks or anything. So he, um, he went to Florida and he went to the Tampa Bay Bucks and just went to all their – he was gonna. He was gonna go to every NFL facility and try to get some kind of tryout. And he even tried this with the CFL in the Arena Football League. And so he met someone at a flag football game, and they gave him the address to someone else in Florida. And it was an invite only tryout. He was not invited, of course, <laughs> but it was an invite only tryout. And um, he had to look for uh, Alonzo Highsmith, who was the former yeah. NFL running for back. Houston, Houston um, I think he played for the Houston Oilers. Yeah, he played for yeah. the Oilers. Um, I ain't going to take my ball, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, that's what the, his connection told him, like, find Alonzo Highsmith mm-hmm. when you go to the workout. Mm-hmm. 
And when he gets there, um, he uh, goes up to, you know, to sign in or whatever. And they ask, okay, who are you? He says, I'm Damon C. Giuseppe. I'm here for the tryout. It's like, do you know Alonzo? Yeah, I know Alonzo. <laughs> and then they let him in. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so they let him wow. in to the tryout. He, he, all he had to I say did. was, he knows I know Alonzo. Alonzo. Yep, I know Zo. And, uh, wow. And then, so the story wouldn't fall apart. Once he got in, he went right up to oh, Alonzo wow. and introduced himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Giuseppe. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and then um, uh, it, at the, uh, he caught punts, he caught passes, and then he ran a 4-3-8-40. Woo. Wow. Uh, I hope which, he make it. Which would have been the sixth fastest time at the Combine this year. Mm. And... Um, and so he got invited to official to an official tryout, and for the Cleveland Browns, and uh, it's well, it's in Cleveland. He's in Florida. He can't get to oh yeah, he ain't got no money. Cleveland. So uh, he slept outside. He slept at a twenty four hour fitness center, and then outside of a training facility. Uh, so um, the story I found it compared it to if you've seen Major League, uh, remember Willie Mays Hayes. Mm-hmm. Who was not invited to spring training, mm-hmm. but he showed up anyway. Uh, so it, it's it's that kind of story. So did he? Is he? I hope he so right it. now he's in. He's at OTAs yeah. for the Browns right now. Because OTA, they when you win OTA, they they provide. Yeah, he got to get that though. Well, yeah, he was in when uh, in with Florida. Alonzo. He's in Florida, right? And they told him to come, to but Cleveland. he got. Oh, they so, just told yeah. him. Yeah, he, it was like a regional combine. Yeah, figured out. Thing. Yeah. Dude. So is he there? Yeah, he's he in got Cleveland there. now. He got okay. to Cleveland. Probably got on the mega bus. That's what's up. It's, so I, we got to reach out to this kid. I hope he make it. We need to reach out to this kid. I know. When I I'm had to hit up my guy from the Cleveland Browns. Mm-hmm. Good to know people. I'm gonna see if we can get him on the show. That's interesting, man. Or maybe when we go up there, try to Interview hopefully he's with him. there. He gonna be there. Let's speak it into existence. Yeah, you know we like. That stuff like that, man. We will be gonna make like the that. team, man. And then, like I said, they're taking care of him while he's in the OTAs. I think you have they have to, right? Mm-hmm. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Hey, four three. Give him a chance. Let him run a few kicks back, man. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's that's. Now you are gonna have look. Now that you told that story, you gonna have people just showing up. The people camps. gonna call. <laughs> you need to get your tail up there right now. And and say, play. You, say you know Zoe. Just say you know Alonzo. They're gonna, look, they're going to be a Dallas talking about, yeah, I know Zoe. I know Alonzo. Yeah. <laughs> There's no Alonzo here. Oh, I mean. Oh, um, I meant uh, Steven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knows Steven. Let him in. Yeah. <laughs> two names Two names you can say that's, that will all, almost always work is Bob or Mike. Mike. Got Mike or Bob. Mike. Yeah, Mike. You know, cause, yeah, Mike. Cause look, because Bob is always somebody that's in charge. Mm-hmm. Bob always somebody Robert. in charge, and then you got Mike. Mike, he's somewhere. Mike somewhere in there. Which Mike? That Mike. <laughs> you know Mike. Mike. You know Mike. You know Mike. <laughs> man, look, my man, Mike, crazy man. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, that's crazy. But, all right, G, appreciate that, man. What's his name again? Give his full name again. Damon Sheehy Giuseppe. Damon Sheehy Giuseppe. 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 Yeah, this Giuseppe's on. Out yes. of Phoenix College. That's what's Phoenix up. College. We're going to try to reach out to him and get him on the Not show. Not University of Phoenix. Phoenix, Phoenix. College. Where, they, where he became All-American and they wouldn't get him a scholarship. So that's Phoenix in, like, Florida, right? No, this is this is in Arizona. It is in Arizona? Okay. Yeah. How he All-American you won't get a man a scholarship? Hmm. We'll get that story soon. <laughs> if we don't have him on the show, we're going to talk to him, interview him. We're going to write a story about him. So... Either or appreciate it, man. We're going to take a quick break, and it is it will be time for What's On My Mind. And I have a lot that's on my mind. We'll be right back. I'm Larry Gajoba from the Cleveland Browns. I'm rocking with the Three Point Conversion Radio. Tune in. Now. You can t- 
tune in to this radio station on any smartphone or tablet. iPhone. Android. Blackberry. Nokia. Samsung. Windows phones. Or whatever you have. Download the free TuneIn app from your phone or tablet's app store. Tune in with music, sports, news, and comedy from over 70,000 radio stations around the world, including this Beasley Broadcast Group station. Check it out at TuneIn.com or your app store. What's good, family? I'm Marlon Sucker Free Jones a Sucker Free Life Double LC, and I'm locked in every Saturday to the best sports show on the planet, the Three Point Conversion, with no team or no players off limits. So let's talk sports, the best of the best, the worst of the worst, and everything in between. Can you dig that? It's time to get in the mind of Mr. Controversy and the intellectual with What's on My Mind. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. And this segment what's on my mind is brought to you by sucker free life llc make sure you live your truth for the world to be worth receive because everyone can be <laughs> sucker free purchase your apparel today on facebook.com forward slash sucker free life llc and it's c-u a c-k like s-u-c-k not sucker S U C K A. Sucker. That's how you spell it. S U C K. Hey, sucker. Not sucker. All right. So, the segment, What's on My Mind, is the segment where we get to go in and talk and speak about what's on our mind, what we've been thinking about, whether it's bothering us, something we like, we don't like, we can't understand. It's just that, you know, way to vent. You know, um, well, not vent, but that's you know we we like just get off get it off our chest. You know what I'm saying? I say that. But um, what's on my mind? Looking at these finals, even in the playoffs, you look at the NBA league right now. The NBA league, as it has been built on the Eurotype ball, but differently. Now nah, you don't have that big man. More so, a small ball. A lot of teams go small. Now you have a 6'9 playing the center. 6'9 guy, 6'8 guy playing the center position. Then, like, four guards. Well, in the playoffs, it seems like, it seemed like size has been the difference in the playoffs. Look at the East. Milwaukee. Their size, them long jokers, all of them long, but they were able to beat Celtics. Uh, I'm not even gonna count Detroit, but they were able to beat the Celtics. But then you got Toronto and Philly, who had size as well, and Philly challenged Toronto in the seven game series, and now you have. You have the Toronto Raptors. They have all the size over the Golden State Warriors. I'm wondering if you know how the league, NBA, NFL's copycat league, will this change now that you've seen that a team, of course you have to have a Kawhi, but a team with size, not just size, but size that can, people that have height or size to them that can move as well. Like I stated, we've been accustomed to seeing small ball, but now you have a team that you size and they haven't only looked good against the Warriors, but they've dominated the Warriors so far. I just wonder what wonder what's gonna happen. I really do. I wanna see if we're gonna see the trend continue. And if it does, it'll be good because I, I definitely wanna see 
guys in the NBA who have size. And now you got big man in the league that don't get picked up or don't get time just because they're big. There's no use for them. Everybody's going small. He's too slow. Or he's So shout out to the Raptors. And like I said, I'm just interested in seeing what's going to happen. And that's what's on my mind. Yeah, I definitely understand that. That would be a big thing to pay attention to whether or not it would go back to a big man's game and the big man being there um because yeah rebounding is although with that being said <clears throat> last night i think golden state did better rebounding than toronto even though they had the bigger team out there but it was more so the loose ball and stuff yeah the long shot <clears throat> long rebounds and stuff like that yeah so what's on my mind today is um the whole issue with mark stevens um uh, and kyle lowry if anyone isn't familiar with that uh in game Three, Kyle Lowry went for a loose ball, and he fell into the front row. Um, one of the things about the front row is when you sign up to get the ticket to sit in the front row, that's expected. It's actually where it is is that on the on the actual ticket, it tells you that they this those are things to be, you know, to be expected. <clears throat> um, so, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, minority owner of the Golden State Warriors, which no one knew at the time who he was shoved Kyle Lowry. Um, he was ejected immediately. He was put out the game. I mean, he was taken away from the front row. They said they went to him and talked to him. And then everyone found out that he was the um, minority owner. I think he was like 7%, something small. Um, but he said it was ex- explicit um, words said. He would call them all type of, uh, you know, words and also shoved them. Now, mind you, he didn't Kyle Lowry didn't run into him. He didn't bump into him. He, it was dude was on the other side of the play, like at least a chair or two away, and just kind of shoved him. Um, so <clears throat> I can't say Adam Silver uh, reacted quickly um, with his, you know, his discipline for it. Um, however, I don't think that he 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 did enough. So the guy is suspended for one year, meaning the rest of these playoffs and all of next year, including the playoffs, and he also was fined a half a million dollars. Now, you know, the half a million dollars, a lot of money. It's probably not a lot to him, but, you know, that is a lot of money. Um, however, been banned for one year, I don't really agree with it. I feel like he probably should have been banned, um, a lifetime ban, because, I mean, the guy that did it with Russ in Utah, he had a lifetime ban, and he never even touched, he never touched Russell, Russ. Now, he, he had been into it previously, and there have been other things, um, but for this guy to be – so owners are held to a different extent, right? They're held to another level. So that's another th- reason why I think he should have got a, a, a lifetime ban. Um, but there is words that um, their Golden State is going to try to make him um, divest his interest in the in the team. Uh, when you own a percentage of that, of that magnitude, it's not really about um, money or receiving any money back or anything. It's more so – about having access to the team like the, the the seat that he had is what was big for him so for him not be able to do that um that would have been more impactful i just don't think that that one year is enough had kyle Lowry went to his place of business and shoved him not only would he be banned from there for from that building probably forever he also probably would have gotten arrested so i think that um or or god forbid that Kyle Lowry pushed him back after he pushed him. And Kyle Lowry would be looking at 30 game suspension probably all in the next year. So I definitely think he should have got more than one year ban. I think it should have been a lifetime ban for touching a player in that magnitude. And that's what's on my mind. Yeah, I think it should have been a little bit more. Um, lifetime, maybe. I I mean, Putting your hands know. on somebody, man. It's different just talking and, you know, uh, like to, to, right. to, to push him. Like what? What if that was Stephen Jacks? Yeah, I, I just and he stole him. You know what I mean? Like if, 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 if you know, Kyle Lowry did, did what he you know he he held his he he really held his held himself. Yeah, I mean it was it was a weak push, so <laughs> I don't think you know. But it was more like Kyle was like, Ooh, and, right. and real quick, just give kudos to players, yeah. as in Russ and everybody, because. We've seen Russ been a couple of times where they came at him and he didn't swing back or say anything. So, and that's the fact that the fact that Kyle just looked at him was like I seen a lot know. on Facebook. Somebody had a video of like just all of the stuff that LeBron has went through, like right. a lot of the things that they yeah they go do through. a lot and they like, don't like and like, they're disciplined not to yeah dude that's crazy. Oh. But all right, it is time to let you go. If you hear that music, you already know what it means. But before we let you go, we have a couple of shoutouts. And stay tuned because you might be part of them. First, I want to give a shout out to Almighty God. 
for giving me this opportunity to do what I do, say what I say, make you all happy, mad, upset, want to give me the stop it button. I I just appreciate you guys. This is great. Um, never take this for granted. Thank you, Raphael. I thank Jerry Jones as well for giving me that shout out. If I was man there. Jerry right, Jerry always, always there for me. <laughs> um, also, I want to uh, give a shout out to our s- sponsors, Sucker Free Life LLC, Cinecuts Barbershop, and Ortho Atlanta. Also, I want to shout out, I guess, Damian Adams for coming on. I want to shout out Deshaun Tate for calling in. Special shout out to my man, E Dub. What up, Ed? Ed is in the building, so I appreciate you coming on. I want to thank my crew, G, and of course, the intellectual. Definitely want to give a shout out to all the friends and family that's listening. Um, one of the best boxers around, E Row. Definitely got to give him a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, shout out to friends and family, man, everybody that listens to us every week, that come in and tune in to us, whether it's our content, whether you're looking on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or website, anywhere you continue to do it. Like I say every week, we can't do this without y'all, and we just really appreciate y'all. All right, and I want to thank my family and friends. First of all, once again, happy anniversary to my beautiful wife of 70 years. Happy anniversary to my children. And um, <laughs> they <laughs> part get, of it. They, get they part of it birthday. too. But um, I want to thank family and friends, <laughs> all my family, all my friends. You should know who you are. Everyone who supports us, um, love people. Let people know that you love them while they're alive. Have a great, great weekend. Enjoy sports. Eat good. Till then, same time, same show, same crazy host, same sports nonsense. Will you miss me? Peace. Peace. Happy anniversary, kids. You just got done listening to the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Be sure to follow us on our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook accounts at the Three Point Conversion. And also make sure you check out our website, the Three Point Conversion.com. Be sure to follow us live and listen every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern.